Kenyan government is threatening to withhold salaries of striking doctors after failing to reach an agreement with the medics to call off their strike. The work stoppage has paralyzed medical services in public hospitals across the country for two months now. Juma Majanga reports from Nairobi. After three days of negotiations between government officials and the doctors' union failed to reach an agreement to end the strike, the government now says it is moving to hold salaries and union remittances for the striking doctors. Susan Humicha is the Cabinet Secretary for Health. We will be asking our council to appeal to the court to review the orders that had been issued initially so that we are allowed to take the necessary action to ensure that Kenyans continue to enjoy health care services. The doctors, led by the Umbrella Union, the Kenya Medical Practitioners, Pharmacists and Dentists Union, went on strike on March 15 to demand a commitment from the government to fulfill collective bargaining agreement signed in 2017. The government says it has addressed all issues raised by the medics except for the salary of intern doctors, which union officials say is the deal breaker. Davji Atella is the Secretary General of the KMPDU. The money we are demanding for doctor interns is only the entertainment allowance for these cabinet secretaries. We are not at any point going to support exploitation of workers. We are not at any time going to support wage slavery because we know that our vulnerable members, the intern doctors, once they are touched, once they are exploited, the next step will be to the doctors working in the hospitals. The next step will be the consultants. If you violate a document that is legal, like collective bargaining agreement, the part of doctor interns, which part of it is safe? Lucian Odiero, a final year medical student at the University of Nairobi, says the move by the government to reduce intern doctors' salary is demoralizing. Majority of the people who run the hospital are usually interns. So if you do not um, compensate interns who have taken about six years or some more or, or more to uh, then countless, countless hours, you know, uh, learning the material, it has taken a lot of time and energy, you know. The 70,000 does not reflect the significant investment and risk that interns have taken in, you know, their training and practice. And that, that just goes to show that the government does not really value, maybe not value, but it does not prioritize healthcare in the country. 70,000 shillings equals to about $520 per month. The ongoing strike has severely disrupted health services in public hostels that many Kenyans depend on. The situation has been compounded by clinical and laboratory workers who are also on strike. This has left patients like Conceptor Oginga in Nakuru County struggling to access care from expensive private hospitals leading to worsening chronic illnesses and even deaths. The doctor's strike is really bad uh, because it has really affected uh, a lot of people, especially people who are not able to support themselves financially. Uh, like currently I'm sick and I'm unable to go to the hospital and the only thing I've managed to do is buy the medicine over the counter. Oginga says her friend lost a baby during birth because of the walkout. She appeals to the government to end the stalemate. For me, my message to the government is to just try to have a dialogue with the doctors so that they can have a common ground and they can go back to doing their job uh, so that not so many people will be suffering the way they are suffering right now. Kenya's health sector, which medical experts say is underfunded and understaffed, has seen a number of strikes over the years. A previous walkout in 2017 lasted 100 days. Patients like Oginga say they hope a lasting solution can be found soon. Juma Majanga, VOA News, Nairobi. South Sudanese authorities are holding up United Nations fuel tankers over a tax dispute, jeopardizing the delivery of millions of dollars of aid during a humanitarian crisis, the UN mission there said.
The trucks were held up at the deports and the Ugandan border on Wednesday, despite assurances from the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs a day earlier that a new tax on trucks carrying fuel and other supplies did not apply to UN humanitarian operations, a spokesperson for the mission said. Minister of Humanitarian Affairs Albino Akok Atak and Information Minister Michael Makuei were not immediately available for comment. The Trade Ministry order this week announcing the tax said the US dollar 300 charge on each goods truck entering and leaving the country was intended to help the government maximize revenue collection by addressing undervaluation and flood. South Sudan, where hundreds of thousands of people died as a result of civil war from 2013 to 2018, is experiencing one of the wildest worst humanitarian crisis as a result of persistent conflict, natural disasters, and poverty. Last month, the United Nations estimated that about 7.1 million of its 12.4 million people would experience crisis-level hunger during the April to July lean season. As of now, the trucks are still held up. The mission is continuing to engage intensively at the highest levels to resolve the situation. Priyanka Chowul, acting spokesperson for the mission known as UN Miss, told Reuters. Humanitarian airdrops have been suspended, affecting 60,000 people in need, and UN Miss has also been forced to review peacekeeping patrols and reduce support to peace and electoral processes, the mission said in a statement on Tuesday. Traders and other organizations have protested against the measure and diplomatic missions called its import imposition on UN and other aid operations illicit and unacceptable in a statement on Sunday. UN Miss has around 20,000 peacekeepers who protect about 180 internally displaced people across the country. Thank you so much for watching and peace.